Now, we'll take a look at what's on the bottom. You've got your connection points for your cables, whether you're stick welding, TIG welding, plasma cutting, you know, the positive and negative output or receptacle. You have, this says it's a plasma pilot arc. That's your plasma arc connection. Air or gas. This is where you plug in either your plasma cutter or the TIG torch. And then over here you've got your plasma or TIG control. This is where you control the machine from the from the wand. Now going up to the controls, this is a really important part of any machine. Uh, it says up here AV5X plus pulse mode AC DC TIG. Now pulse mode in AC and DC is something relatively new. The pulse mode allows you to control your heat better so you can weld on much lighter material without burning through it. But it also improves the fusion of your weld by uh, a pulse usually has a background amperage, kind of a minimal amperage which is on all the time. But then there's a high amperage pulse as much as 350 or more amps in some of your units. But it's a pulse of very high amperage which hits your, your material with a, a lot of energy and then shuts down to your basic or background amperage. That fuses your filler material right into the metal a whole lot better. There's better fusion with pulse. So you don't have as much porosity. Uh, you don't have cold joints. Uh, that can be a problem in TIG welding, cold joints, porosity. Plasma helps to clean that up to where you're getting a very good solid fusion of your metals. Now over here at the top you have your base amperage. Now the base amperage is what we call base or background amperage. That's your minimal amperage on your pulse system. That brings your whole torch and workpiece up to a minimal heat point where it's keeping your, your arc going, it keeps your metal warmed up, but it's not enough to actually weld or move metal. So you set that to where your puddle, the puddle is where your TIG is, is melting down the, the little puddle area. You keep it until your puddle is almost frozen, but not quite. It's just barely liquid. This is your pulse amperage. That's the action into the welding. That's what nails the material with the pulse of high amperage to deposit metal and fuse everything together. So those two work together. And down here we've got your pulse frequency when you're in pulse mode, which you don't have to be in pulse mode, but it could help depending on what you're welding. Your pulse frequency is 0.5 pulses per second, half a second, up to as high as 25 pulses per second, which is pretty fast because you're, you're moving your filler rod pretty fast at 25 25 hertz. Pulse width. This is the, the top of the pulse or your amperage that you're delivering to your material. It sets the width of amperage that's delivered to the material. And that's 0.1 to 0.9 percent of of one, which means basically 10% to 90% is your pulse width. Over here you have your arc amperage and that looks like it's uh, relegated to your, your stick mode, which would be your arc mode. Okay, now this is important when you're welding aluminum. 
you have to weld aluminum uh, with your TIG machines in AC mode. Uh, you can use DC welding if you have a MIG machine where you're, you're using a MIG gun or a spool gun. You can use DC. When you're using a TIG torch, use AC for aluminum, DC for ferrous metals. Okay, so here's your AC frequency. Your AC is anywhere from 20 up to 100 hertz. That's the frequency of your square wave. You have AC balance. Now, this is really important. This sets the percentage of EP to EN. EP is your, your positive voltage. EN is your negative voltage. In a in AC, of course, you know it's you normally have a sine wave. Well, with these machines, it's a square wave. But this sets the the pulse width of the top part of the the of the wave to the bottom part of the wave. And the reason you want that is on your positive part of the AC cycle. The positive part cleans the metal, but does not fuse the metal. It cleans the metal, and that's why you have to have AC for welding aluminum. You have to clean the metal with electrons right before you fuse the metal together in order to super clean aluminum oxides and debris or what, whatever kind of contaminants are on that aluminum. It's got to be perfectly clean, so you use electrons to clean the metal right before you fuse it. So the EP, which is your positive part of the cycle, cleans the metal. Your negative part fuses the metal. Now normally you want to have a lot less cleaning action than you want fusing action. So the AC balance gives you anywhere from 30% to 70% EP, or positive cleaning action. You normally don't need any more than 30% cleaning action to 70% uh, fusing action. The only time you'd need this any higher is if you're working with really dirty, nasty aluminum. Okay, over here you have a dial that says post flow. Well, that's for your argon gas. And it's how many seconds after you turn the uh, the amperage off that the gas continues to flow. Now the reason you need post flow is that the argon has to continue flowing through your torch and you leave the torch right there in place right above your workpiece because the argon keeps the cleaning action of argon going so you don't oxidize your tungsten or the hot workpiece. If you're if you're using up to 250 amps, you want 25 seconds of post flow. Okay, we're on our bottom row of controls and readout panel. So upslope you use to prevent cratering or burning through your metal as you start your welding. Upslope means you're sloping your amperage up from a minimum amperage up to the maximum set welding amperage that you have set up here. You ramp up slowly so you can heat up your metal before you begin welding and that'll prevent it'll prevent cratering or burning through as you begin your weld. The downslope is at the end of your welding Normally, welders leave a crater or a hole, so the downslope allows that amperage to slope down from your maximum welding amperage down to a minimum. That gives you time to fill in the crater by decreasing the heat. And you've got 10 seconds of upslope, 10 seconds of downslope, depending on the thickness and the cratering that's going on. Over here we've got three switches. This switch it switches from arc or stick welding.
cut means your plasma cutter, and then TIG is of course TIG welding. And here is a very confusing uh, switch in on most machines. It's only confusing if you don't understand the action. This one says tap on, tap off, which shows four arrows. That's what you call four T, or four taps. Down here you have what they call manual, or two arrows, which is two T. When you're in your four T mode, it says tap on, tap off. On your, your TIG torch, 4T means you tap on and let off. That starts your arc. When you tap on, tap off again, it stops your arc. So that's 4T. 2T means you push down your switch and you hold it for welding. As soon as you let off, it stops the, the arc. Now in your 2T mode, you need that for your pedal. Your pedal only understands 2T. In other words, you push the pedal down, your power is on, you let the pedal off, your power is off. So that's 2T or, or 4T means like 4 throw in electronic terms. 2T means 2 throw. Okay, last switch is TIG or plasma AC, so both TIG and plasma are AC power. And then your arc is generally DC power. Now arc can also be AC, which is your stick mode. It could be AC, but there's no reason AC with your stick leaves a very poor weld. DC makes so much better stick mode welding that you're going to use DC on that all the time. And the last thing we have here is your display. It's your seven segment display showing amperage. You have just a couple lights up here. You have power and then a warning. That'll be your overheating warning light. So that's it as far as the first impressions on the AV5X Plus from the Vortec. If you're interested in one of his machines, call Jeff Knapp down at a Vortec, and he's a fun guy to talk with. So in the next segments, we'll show actually using each of these torches in real welding modes or cutting, whatever it happens to be. Till then, start cutting metal, start welding, get your industries growing, join the Christian Democratic Socialist Movement, and let's fix the planet with, with a, a new wave of self-starters. Till then, see you later.